Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here and welcome to episode 28 of My Son the Trader. Uh, we are big size. We've got that last episode, as you can see there. Um, so large is what we're aiming for next. Probably going to take a little while, so we won't, uh, we won't sort of focus into that too much. Um, but we're going to advance here. Of course, last episode was a pretty, pretty important one. We had the, uh, the debut for our series here of Rey Mysterio, one of my personal favorites, uh, and someone that's gonna be really, really big going forward uh, for us. We're, we're gonna do a, we'll probably do a Rob Van Dam style push on him, um, but he will sort of remain in the cruiserweight division, at least for, for a little while. And what we're gonna try and do with him is use him essentially to elevate the rest of the cruiserweight division and to try and bring them up to a level where, you know, the, the, the match quality is high enough and looks good enough in terms of ratings for us to, to sort of be happy. So that's my, my plans anyway. Um, just looking at a few things here. So there we go. Harley Race is retired. Um, had a show in the Great Lakes for nearly 1,200 fans, 11,900 in ticket sales. Uh, we've got the WWF increasing their production values and their music levels. Does that give us any penalties? Hmm. I guess we can maybe sort of take a look at our own, I guess. Um, if I can find out where it is because I'm literally blind. Um, I did say we're gonna take a little broadcast as well, so we will, uh, we will do that as well. Um, we have no rivals. What size is the WWF? Are they large? They are a large size. Interesting. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Uh, okay. Uh, broadcasting, we'll take a little quick look. Uh, we should be able to potentially get some new TV deals. Who have we got? We've got America One. My microphone in the way here. Uh, Bravo. We're, we're already on them. We're already on them as well for our pay per views. Uh, I've got ESPN. Um, and they will negotiate with us. So we could potentially get onto a big broadcaster at the moment. So for our, sh our TV show at the moment for Nitro, we're only on Showtime. Um, and again, neutral wrestling, high risk. You know, that's all well and good. Um, but that's only for pretty much every region in the United States are there. So technically, we could get a new TV deal. Um realistically i want to wait for this one to expire i know that sort of seems a little maybe counterproductive but it expires in six months two weeks that'll essentially be sort of mid 2002 i think that's probably good enough um and then we can look to actually get on one of these other bigger channels like an espn uh, that has that big coverage across all those regions um i wonder if there's anyone else you got in demand. It's another pay per view carrier for for New Japan and WWF. Um, we go MTV, big size as well. Potentially a little bit lower. Um, we've got a mainstream broadcast style as well. Medium risk. I think ESPN's high risk. Uh, packs are small, medium. Medium, which is Showtime. Uh, you got all the single, single Sinclair stations, which probably could do as well. Um, you got TBS, who are very big. So that's interesting, and they also actually cover Canada as well. Um, small in Quebec, but medium everywhere else. Could be a very, very good option for us to get onto TBS. Um, although they are, they are highly against wrestling. So I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know about that. Obviously, Time Warner. Bit of a uh, bit of bad blood there. Uh, TNN very big across all the US, um, but they currently have Raw. Um, they are highly pro wrestling as well, though, um, and we could get on them. They're actually, I mean, their their popularity level they need is is very low considering. Um, you need to be seventy seven popularity across a lot of the US regions to get to, you know, big size. Uh, TNT, same sort of thing, although they're also highly against wrestling at the moment. Probably forever, but as a result of uh, WCW sort of going under. Um, but we got UPN, who is neutral wrestling, medium risk, commercial terrestrial, and they are willing to negotiate. They do currently have SmackDown, but they're huge across the United States. Uh, you got USA Network, they're also against wrestling, which is pretty funny because they obviously eventually get raw in the uh, the near future. Uh, VH1, only big, also against wrestling. Puerto Rico there, should probably get onto them. Um, I could actually, will they negotiate? They are at maximum companies, which I assume is two, based on what's there. Uh, who else have we got? Pretty much no one. Got maybe Telemundo. No, nope. they're also maximum companies with, again, two companies. Um, TBS looks pretty good though. Yeah, TBS looks pretty good, and I think UPN probably looks the best. Um, sort of depending on what we can get in Canada. Uh, let's take a quick little look. Get big in Quebec with that one. The Maritimes medium. Hmm, interesting. Um, we could actually get on these guys for pay per view. Who's our current pay per view? We've got these two, I think, yeah. I mean, they're, they're big and big. They literally cover all, all the regions. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. As far as TV goes, do we... Uh, what channel are we on? We're on Showcase, aren't we? Uh, no. We're on... What are we on? TBS? No. TBS is one I want to get on to. I'm very... I'm sort of losing my mind at the moment. Um... We even have a we do who is it city tv and a channel as well pretty much medium everywhere and it's small in quebec and tbs is small in quebec um, but medium everywhere else and then that gets us you know very big in those other regions i just don't like that they're highly against wrestling and obviously we, we've got the potential there to, to get huge, which is obviously above very big. Disregard, they have given away the maximum amount of broadcast slots. Okay. Um, TBS will take us. So they will take us potentially in six months or just over six months. I guess that's what we're doing. I don't know. There's no real other options. So they all expire at the exact same time as well. Very nice. I guess we're going to potentially go back into a uh, Time Warner owned broadcaster. It is what it is. Anyway, let's get into Nitro. Get into Nitro. Get us in there. Backstage incident. We've got wrestlers caught for Jindrak. Positive impact there with Dusty as well. Um, I'm going to look for some, or look for a new road agent, uh, once we finish the episode here and we go off camera, I won't sign anyone. I'll obviously do that on camera with you guys. Uh, let's run the mid Atlantic for this episode. If we can, um, Baltimore arena looks pretty good though. Try and sell that sucker out. eh? Nice. Um, main event, main events real easy. This one, uh, I'm going to go book T Chavo Guerrero. Simple, easy, 
done. Good match, non-title match, of course. Big Dusty. Ooh, Cheetah to win. Uh, it's going to be a decisive win as well. We're going to have, we'll have a distraction. Nothing too serious. Uh, we'll have Chavo come out. Uh, actually, let, let's let's do this. Let's do interference with uh, with Eddie, and then I'm going to have Chavo be distracted by Diamond Dallas Page. Obviously, DDP will be versing Booker T at Mayhem, so it uh, it makes sense. Uh, and then we'll have a little little stare down between all four members. You can you can probably see where we're going with this one. Um, but yeah, Booker T. Uh, and we'll go Diamond Dallas Page, then we'll go Eddie Guerrero, and then we'll go Chavo Guerrero. That'll finish the show off. All four men unscripted, all four men on entertainment. And we uh, we get that one locked in. It's going to be a really good angle. Um, and it's going to be a post-match angle. Very, uh, very creative by me. That, do that. Just make it look nice. Dusty Rhodes done post-match um uh let's yeah let's do this uh pre-match i'm gonna have rob van dam cut a promo onto chavo and onto eddie i'll have we'll have them off screen um but that should ho hopefully be a 90 rated angle i'm gonna script him just in case but we'll, uh we'll go with that nice and that that again furthers that storyline for the United States title. Also gets both Chavo and Eddie in there for a, a little bit of extra success as well. Um, the other storylines are all still going to be, you know, improving with further success as well. Um, yeah. All right. Other matches. Uh, Want to book tag team match? Uh, I'm going to have a couple of tag team matches, but this one's going to be a pretty important one. We're going to have Lowdown taking on the Rhodes family. We sort of pre-booked this one. Again, it's going to be our... Uh, it's going to be our tag team match for the titles at Starcade. So this is sort of a, a little little bit of a test, a little, little six-minute match, non-title. Um, and we'll, we'll just go from there. Um... I think what I want to do is make it tainted. So let's let's do that. Set a decisive. We'll go tainted with the uh the winner being Dustin Rhodes. Loser can be Chaz. Kill. Cool. Uh I'll give that one to Arn. That's fine. Yep, non-title, perfect. Again, we'll we'll just have a, a Dustin and Dusty angle going into it. Uh, entertainment, entertainment. Bang, bang. Uh, yeah, we'll unscript him. There's less, uh, less chance of an issue happening. Uh, I then want to do a six-man tag. And we're going to have a six-man tag cruiserweight match. We're going to have Rey Mysterio teaming up with... Shane Helms and Billy Kibben. They're going to be taking on a heel team. Uh, we'll go three count. And probably, where is he? Uh, where is he? Um, Oh, I think he's a face, isn't he? All right. In that case, we'll just go Sanders. Oh, Sanders in the wrong spot. Um, yeah, that's fine. It, it works. It wasn't exactly the, the heel team that I wanted. I thought for some reason somebody else was a... Uh, at least wasn't a... Wasn't a face. Um, but that's fine. We'll give Evan Courageous the loss. Make it decisive. Good win. Um, can be a high spots match, essentially. Run with that. Um, 
Part of me wants to give Ray an angle. As you can see, I did um I did change his photo. I did mention I was going to do that. Finished it up after last episode. That's uh, one of the pictures in there, and I think it's an absolutely badass picture. Um, it's early days as well. I'm not sure if it's. It looks like WWF, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um. Yeah, I was going to look at Ray's entertainment skills, which are pretty bad. Um, who's got the best out of these three? Probably Helms. Yeah. I definitely think it's going to be Helms. Yeah. Um, I might just do an angle with Ray and Helms, to be honest. Um, part of me maybe wants to, to turn Billy Kidman, but I don't think he's really going to get over that much with Yeah, with with him as a heel, I don't, I don't know. I, I just kind of want him to be heel so we don't have this weird sort of face versus face with like our three best cruiserweights that we have at the moment. Um, I'm potentially thinking about pushing Shannon Moore as well. Um, and I know a lot of you guys have been sort of suggesting that I, instead of pushing AJ Styles into the TV title storyline, which will begin next month, um, you guys think I should maybe push AJ as a cruiserweight sort of contender, um, which I agree with. I think it's a, it's a pretty good idea as well. Uh, and part of me wants to do sort of AJ crossing over into both divisions per se, like the TV title, and then have him potentially going for the cruiserweight title at the same time. Um, sort of like a Kenny Omega belt collector type gimmick. Anyway. Other things we need to do. What else do we need to do? We need to do another tag match. That's going to be Anguish taking on Jindrak and Stasiak. So we'll get that one in there. Six minutes for that one. And then we're going to have a super crazy win. Jindrak to lose. Open script, decisive. Uh, and we're going to keep Sean Stasiak strong. Nice. Perfect. I'm trying to think of like what we could do to get anguish. Let's do this. So let's have super crazy and psychosis be attacked by little Guido and Tracy Smothers. And then we're also gonna have Johnny the Bull. Um, I'm only gonna do entertainment for those two. Everybody's gonna get a bit of success coming out of this one, but I might try and type this one actually, um, cause it's gonna be re relatively hard to, uh, to explain. Um, anguish are attacked post-match by fully-blooded Italians. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. Get rid of that. A full stop, and then we'll have Johnny the Bull uh, is seen watching at the top of the ramp. Top of ramp. You guys obviously get what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I mean, I could maybe do selling for these guys. I don't know how good Crazy and Psychosis is selling is. Uh, but essentially what's going to happen is after the match, Super Crazy Psychosis, they're celebrating in the ring. And then we're going to have fully blooded Italians come down. Mothers, Guido, take him out post-match, of course, following up from last week. Um, but then we have Johnny the Bull sort of standing at the entrance ramp, just just observing what's happening. Nothing's really said. I know I've got entertainment there, um, but it's more just his um, demeanor, shall we say. So I'll have that post-match. Let me just check the selling ability of Super Crazy. Should be pretty good. Yeah, 81 selling, and then Psychosis is 76. Perfect, all right. That's actually not too bad. 
So we'll do that. Um, want to have another match. We're going to have Vader taking on, where is he, Colt Cabana. Uh, we're just literally going to have Vader win, be script and decisive. Like, we'll, we'll give on the road agent duties here. Uh, I'm going to have a menace angle for Vader uh, and Colt. Typical four minute Vader angle, trying to punk out Colt Cabana. And then I think post-match we'll do a CM Punk promo. Onto, onto Vader. I might even, do I rate Vader on Menace? I mean, I could, could potentially do that. I think that it might do well. I, I honestly don't really know how well it's gonna do. Anyway. Um, Kurt Hennig, Sean O'Hare, what are we gonna do for this one? Um, potentially need to do something with RVD as well. Enig versus RVD, that could be a that could be a big match. What's RVD's popularity looking like at the moment? It's pretty high. I think it's like nearly sixty, or it's in the sixty. Yeah, sixty-one. Pretty much sixty-one, sixty-two. Actually, sixty-four in the Mid Atlantic where we are tonight. Hmm. Interesting that, that, uh, I've, I've pretty much got RVD's first feud for, for January. It's going to be RVD versus Kurt Hennig. I think that's actually a really good storyline we could run with those two. Anyway, um, need to work out what I'm doing. So, I think we'll go another match. We'll Could essentially put them together now to do like a tag match. Let's do this. Let's do Enig and Canyon because Canyon is not really doing anything at the moment. Um, and I'd like to get him on the card because obviously he's got really good popularity. They both do. Um, and I think at this point, I think RVD can suffer a loss. So we'll do RVD um, and then he can team up with, where is he? Sean O'Hare, it's actually a really good match. Might give that one eight minutes and see if we can um, actually run an eight minute match with it. Uh, so let's go Canyon to win the loser. Loser's gonna be O'Hare, I don't really wanna make my champion take the uh the pinfall in that one if I'm being honest. Um Yeah, I think that works. I, I might even chuck a little uh a little interference in there on Rob Van Dam by Chavo. It sort of it can add a little bit of fuel to the fire so it can be you know Chavo's more focused on interfering in this tag match with RVD being involved than he is actually on focusing on the main event versus the world champion, which again, sort of at least gives him a, a bit of a storyline excuse as to why he uh, he might lose that match. Uh, let's run a Hennig, Sean O'Hare angle. Try and run it without a, uh, with a script to follow, be nice. And it works, perfect. Um, We'll see how we do with time because I want to try and get everything everything sorted. Um, again, we need to do something with buff. Uh, preferably, we'll take a look at Samoa Joe real quick. I'm trying to get Joe up there as well because I'd like to have to have Joe be involved in the the TV title storyline division. That we're gonna gonna be running very shortly. Um, 
Yeah, that's a weird one. We, again, haven't done anything with Team Canada this episode either. Um, I might do this. Let's do a tag match. Try and just do a little six-minute tag. Um, let's have Team Canada 1. They can take on American Dragon. Uh, who do we team them with? Lash LaRue, maybe? Yeah. I mean, Lash LaRue, he's got, a, he's got a little bit of popularity about him. Uh, give Mike Orson the win. Um, and I actually want to make Lash LaRue be the loser. Perfect. Works well. Uh, that can be our wild brawl, I, I guess. I, I don't know. They have good brawling. Yes. Uh, Brian Danielson does not. Not much of a brawler. Bit more of a, a technical master class. Um, obviously Lance Storms is very good and Awesome's gonna be gonna be quite good, so I might just we'll run with the wild brawl, honestly. Uh we've got how long? Ten minutes left. So I can do a four minute angle and I can do a six minute angle. Um at the moment we're at sixty percent. So we would be penalized. So I need to fix that. Um, who haven't we used? Um, so we need a storytelling match, which is fine. That can be this match here. Very easy. Storytelling. Could be. I was going to say, can that be the wild brawl? Maybe not. Uh, and then we need. So that's on already. This match here can be on Anderson as well. Perfect. And who have we used? All right, so Buff and Joe, I'll just I'll just do another another angle. What's um what's Joe's entertainment skills like? They're actually not half bad. I might just do a double entertainment angle. So we'll go. We'll have Samoa Joe come out, and uh, he can start the the proceedings against Buff Bagwell. As far as promos go, because obviously Buff's been. You know, dropping his dropping his angles recently. So we'll do that one. Then we need four more minutes. What else do we do? Um I mean, I could just, I could just give it to Can like Canyon. It... Or do I go Shane? Shane and Jarrett, maybe, again? Maybe just Jarrett by himself. Let let's do that. Jarrett by himself, he'll call out Shane McMahon, um, and their match at the pay-per-view will be booked. I'm going to make it four minutes. I'm not really too fussed with it. Um, and yeah, Jeff Jarrett wants... Pay-per-view match with Shame It Man. Entertainment, script, bang, bang, off screen. Eh, Jarrett doesn't want a script. That's fine. There we go. Open the show. And we would not be penalized. Perfect. Quickly do a pre-show tag match. Want to have Styles team up with someone. Um, can be DDP this week. That's perfectly fine. Well, I kind of want Johnny the Bull in there, but we'll, we'll go with DDP. Um, and they can take on the team of... Might go with Young Dragons, I think. And I'll give AJ the win. Meant to do. And once again, we'll go open script decisive. Go with Arn for that one as well. It's going to be a relatively good match, that one. Uh, and then another pre-show. Uh, we'll go with heels for this one. Let's go Buff and Eddie, the the two penalty dwellers, shall we say? Uh, and they can take on the team of Hendrick and David Flair. 
thinking of um sending david flair back to the power plant that was another thing that was sort of mentioned recently uh for this one i'll give eddie the win because i want to try and build his momentum uh sort of as much as possible going into to starcade if we can get it sort of hot or red hot i think we'd be in a in a really good position um so that one will be pre-show as well i'll probably i don't know which one's going to do better i think this one with buff and eddie anyway let's uh let's run the show it's actually looking like a pretty good show this one so kick things off with a 55 rated pre-show tag match aj styles and ddp defeat young dragons in 11.57, when AJ Styles pinned Kaz Hayashi with a spiral tap. And AJ and DDP have zero chemistry as tag team partners. So glad I put that on first. And the second pre-show tag, we get a 65 rating. We have Buff Bagwell and Eddie Guerrero defeating Brian Kendrick and David Flair. In 12.27, when Eddie Guerrero pinned Brian Kendrick with a frog splash. Head and shoulders above everybody else there for Eddie. Um, he looked excellent out there, despite being penalized through the effects of, you know, going through his personal matters. Good match. Good pre-show. All right, we then kick things off with a 68 rated angle here. It's only a four-minute angle, so it's probably a little bit lower than it, than it normally would have been had it been six. Um, we have Jeff Jarrett. He wants a pay-per-view match with Shane McMahon at Mayhem. Um, he's been pissed off with, with obviously everything that, um, that Shane's been putting him through. Of course, Jarrett believes that he's essentially deserved a rematch for the world title against Booker T. And, uh, yeah, Shane is not of the same opinion. And, uh, we'll have to wait and see if, uh, Shane responds and books the match. Alrighty, we then go into a 66 rated angle here where we've got Samoa Joe and Buff Bagwell. Again, this, this week, Samoa Joe is the one that calls out Buff. And yeah, Joe looked lost, which is frustrating, but uh, these both, you know, they're both rated on entertainment. Um, and it's potentially going you know, to hopefully raise Samoa Joe's popularity level, uh, which is, again, the main thing I'm trying to do at the moment. I'm trying to get him at least into that recognizable level so I can have a proper, you know, TV champion. Going to bring back the TV title. AJ Styles likely going to be either the first champion or the, the first contender. Honestly, I'm not, I don't, I don't really know who to put it on at this stage. So some old Joe, AJ, they could, you know, even Sam Punk, they all could be the, the first TV champion at Starcade. Yeah, 66, solid enough. We move on. Going to a 62 rated tag team match. We have Team Canada defeating American Dragon and Lash LaRue in 617 when Mike Awesome pinned Lash LaRue with an awesome bomb. Um, probably should have actually turned Tori for this one. That's a little uh, little frustrating. I wonder if I can. Yeah, I don't think there's any, any way for me to possibly do that. That would have been perfect because obviously Awesome won. Um, could have maybe done an interference there with a turn. Bang. Have to remember to do that. Anyway, we move on. We go into a 72 rated angle where we have Kurt Hennig, old school, um, and Sean O'Hare being the new school. And we have them cutting a promo back and forth with each other prior to a, a bit of tag team action against each other. That match does an 82. Very good rating there. We got Kurt Hennig and Canyon. Ooh. I just looked down here. Yeah, Kurt Hennig and Canyon defeating Rob Van Dam and Sean O'Hare in 825 when Canyon pinned Sean O'Hare with a flatliner. During the match, we also had Chavo Guerrero run in and attack RVD. Rob Van Dam and Sean O'Hare have excellent tag team chemistry. Interesting. Very interesting there. But yeah, Kurt Hennig suffered or sustained a torn Achilles. That's a bad injury. That is a bad injury. We might have to replace him. We might do Canyon versus O'Hare at the pay-per-view now because essentially Canyon has nothing to do. So, yeah, we might do that. 
Very good match though. Very frustrating. Hopefully not too bad. Hopefully we can actually do surgery on it. Anyway, 67 rated angle here. Menace angle there for Vader. Trying to punk out Colt Cabana being CM, Punk, CM Punk's friend. Tag team partner backstage. Um, and of course, they uh, they have a match up next. 67, that's slightly above what it's been recently for Vader. So looking good. The match does very well. We get a 69 rated Vader match where he defeats Colt Cabana in 601 by pinfall with a Vader bomb. Good stuff, 66 entering there. Colt Cabana with a 45, solid. And we follow that up with a 65 rated angle. 65, got CM Punk rated on, on Entertainment and then we got Vader once again rated on Menace. Yeah, CM Punk was superb, working without a script. Solid. That that will hopefully gain him some more popularity as well. All right, we then go into a 53-rated tag team match where we have Anguish defeating Jindrak and Stasiak in 546 when Super Crazy pinned Mark Jindrak with a moonsault. And yeah, Jindrak, the weak link. Good match, though. And Anguish are now our number one contenders for the world tag team titles. And they will be taken on lowdown at Mayhem. We then go into a following post-match angle, which gets a 50 rating. But we have Anguish, and they're attacked post-match by fully-blooded Italians. And we have Johnny the Bull, and he's seen essentially watching what's taking place at the top of the ramp. Doesn't say anything, doesn't get involved. Um, apparently Guido once again doing a masterful job improvising interactions. I put him on entertainment. I didn't even realize, but uh, yeah, didn't script him either. And he's done really well. And of course, the uh, the selling there from Super Crazy and Psychosis. Hopefully help the angle a little bit. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, Guido's got a legendary gimmick as well. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good stuff. So it, it sort of looks like, or at least, you know, there's hints that uh, Johnny the Bull is maybe starting to, to run things and he's given advice to, to the rest of fully-blooded Italians. And uh, Johnny's, you know, he's looking like the, the leader, potentially, of FBI, fully-blooded Italians. We then go into a 56-rated angle where we have Rey Mysterio Jr. and the current world cruiserweight champion, Shane Helms. Um, and again, a bit more backstage words before they go out for their six-man tag. Uh, and yet, Billy Kidman is nowhere to be seen. Interesting. We go into a 64-rated six-man tag match where we have Rey Mysterio Jr., Shane Helms, and Billy Kidman defeating the team of Mike Sanders and three count Evan Courageous, Shannon Moore. In 625, when Rey Mysterio pinned Evan Courageous, with a Frankensteiner. And yeah, just a good match. Shane Helm 65. Rey Mysterio 65 in ring. Um, and Billy 58, a little bit lower. Good match though, 64 for our cruiserweights. We then go into a 69 rated angle with the Rhodes family. Of course, they cut a promo saying that they're, they're going to beat Lowdown. And if they beat them, then they deserve to, to get a world tag team title shot. Um, at a time of their choosing, they say. Of course, Dustin, essentially, you know, he got one up over Shane McMahon as a result of Dusty. So uh, essentially, Shane owes them, the Rhodes family, a, a bit of a favor for going 2-1 up in that series. Uh, and they've got a very poor dialogue for, for Dustin being off script. So a little bit frustrating, but we move on. Still a 69, it's good enough. Uh, 64 rated tag team match where we have the Rhodes family defeating Lowdown in 605 when Dustin Rhodes pinned Chaz while using the ropes for leverage. But Dustin cheats and uh, the Rhodes family get a win over the current world tag team champions. Again, further adding a little bit of fuel to the fire. It's essentially going to be, be the way that we set up the, the world tag team title match for Starcade. So... As a result now, essentially, Rhodes family are number one contenders for Starcade. 
and they will verse the winner of Mayhem's World Tag Team title match between Lowdown and Anguish. Now I got Dusty Rhodes off his game, Tag Team Specialist for Lowdown. Good match. All right, we then go into a 95 rated angle. We have Rob Van Dam cutting a promo onto Chavo Guerrero and of course onto Eddie Guerrero there as well off camera. So essentially he's uh, not dragging the rating down at all. Although he potentially might've made it better. I don't know. Either way, RVD is, he might be this series' goat. He might be the, the greatest of all time for the My Son the Trader series. I don't know yet. It's too early. We, we've got to sort of wait maybe until we until we throw the world heavyweight title on him. I don't like to throw around that, that goat status uh, too early. Uh, but he's looking really good. All right, we then go into the main event. Gets us an 85 rated match. You know I love to see, love to see those 85s, the, the blue rated matches. Um, this one's an interesting one because we, we've got an interesting penalty there that I haven't seen for a while. Uh, we've got Booker T defeating Chavo Guerrero Jr. in 15-54. Wipe him forward with a scissors kick. During the match, we also saw Eddie Guerrero run in and attack Booker T. And we also had DDP attack Chavo Guerrero Jr., so DDP getting involved, costing Char- not costing Chavo the match, but getting involved after obviously Eddie got involved as well. Essentially, you know, leading to you know, an eventual finish where Booker Booker makes a comeback and then gets the uh, the one two three on Chavo. Uh, but yeah, ninety in ring there for Booker, seventy eight for Chavo, um, and there were times when there was a def- definite lack of psychology on display. That means that the the psychology between these two wasn't good enough to essentially rate the match higher. There's a lack from one of the two or even both of them, Uh, but they also have pretty good chemistry facing each other. Something very good for the future, potentially. You know, if Booker T does drop the title, um, Chavo sort of finding himself coming up, you know, he he will eventually be an upper mid-carder. Still probably a mid-carder at the moment, I think, personally. Uh, but he's not far off, not far off. It's a really good match for our main event. Uh, and the post-match angle, the main event angle to finish off the show, it's pretty good. We get a 93. So not as good as RVD's sort of solo angle, but it's it's good enough to, to finish off the show. And we have Booker T and his number one contender for the next pay-per-view, Diamond Dallas Page. Um, and they cut a promo together. Onto Los Guerreros. And uh, yeah, essentially this is going to be our main event for next episode. Tag team match. Got the face team of Booker T and his opponent at the pay-per-view, Diamond Dallas Page. Taking on the team of Eddie Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero, Los Guerreros. And yeah, Booker T, real star. DDP looked good or looked excellent. Chavo underperformed. Um... And then all four of them actually doing well off script. Uh, Booker T, hot catchphrase. Eddie Guerrero, hot catchphrase as well. And again, get the penalty. But that's perfectly fine. And we finish the show off with a... Oh, they're, they're so good at the moment. Our show ratings are so good. 87 rated Nitro there. That might beat Raw again. I mean, Raw had a bad week last week. Kind of interested to see, you know, if they actually do a little bit better this week. But yeah, increases popularity, 13 regions, very good stuff. We'll, we'll take a little looky here. What do we got? Um, apparently, Dilo Brown is turning into a good worker. We've got 1.26 TV rating for this week. And the torn Achilles there for Kurt Hennig. So we'll take a look at that after we check Raw. We beat Raw again. Yes. you love to see it. 86 there for Raw. We got an 87. We're winning the war. Essentially. I mean, their TV ratings are a lot higher than ours, but fine. Uh, What do we got? 95 rated match for a triple threat. Stone Cold defeating Triple H and Kane. 
Then we had a 92 for Undertaker and Big Show defeating Edge and Christian. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. Some good matches there. Angle defeating Steve Blackman, getting an 85 as well. Go to Madison Square Garden. Alrighty. Lovely stuff. Let's have a look at this uh, this injury. It's so bad. It's essentially a, a year injury. We can do surgery. And we're going to do it. Yes. All right. What do we got? Eight months, one week. All right. It's not terrible. But the, some of our injuries are quite bad. Like Hennig, main eventer. Test. The broken neck, which is ridiculous. And that one's, I'd say, he's, he's an upper mid, he's sort of just on that brink of mid card to upper mid card. Uh, Palumbo mid carder was one half of our world tag team champions at the time. Um, and then Cena's back in five days. Five days for Cena. But he'll be here, he'll be here next episode for the go home show. Ooh, do we give him his debut at the pay per view? Hmm. We very well could do that. Interesting. Um, I'm, I potentially might give Cena the the rocket push. Yeah. Anyway, size we we haven't improved there. Have we improved in Canada at all? I should probably, you know, keep a bit of a closer eye on Canada at the moment. Um, I might purchase a broadcaster for Mexico as well. Let's um, let's actually do that now. Let's have a look look at a few a few other things. Um, so training facilities, we we do have the power plant. Um, and as you can see, it it, it is set to essentially have all these people debut, which is really good. Um, some of them are obviously. Quite some time away with Brock Anderson, Rex Steiner there. Um, Boogeyman 2005, you got Heath Miller. I guess is Heath Slater, potentially, 2005. Cody Rhodes, 2006. Uh, Uha Nation, which is... How have I forgotten his name? Forgotten his name. Anyway, completely forgotten his name. Um, Cody Hall, which would have been an interesting one had we got uh, Scott Hall. Uh, and then you got Moose in there as well, who would be a very, very good pickup. Um, it's at fifty percent. Not really costing us that much to to run. So yeah, um, and apparently we're expected to get five gradu graduates each year, um, which I assume is in January. So we could be getting. A few more people uh although no it says it says different times during the year okay all right uh one thing i do want to do is take a quick quick little look at where is it mcw uh there's still only 104,000 in the red uh, when do they actually have their shows that's a lot of shows wow is that like legit Huh. Yeah, because they've got this. This runs in week one of every single month. And then they've got events for Friday, week two, Friday, week three, and Friday, week four. And then that sort of runs throughout the entire year. Which explains why they're in the red. Um, but it would be a very good you know, event schedule for the your sort of like younger workers. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll keep a close eye on that. It hasn't really um gone up any further. Um it does it says it serves as a territory. 
Um, yeah, but they only have a friendly attitude towards each other and they agree to accept developmental workers from them. So I don't know if they... Um, yeah, they're definitely not like, not like an actual developmental territory, I assume. Yeah, interesting one. Cool. All right, what else are we doing? Um, I did say I was going to start a broadcaster. Um, let's go with... <sighs> I'm trying to think, do I be creative or do I just rip someone off? Hmm. Do we just go the fight network? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll do that. So we're going to go the fight network. Uh, we'll go internet commercial. Do we go commercial or subscription? It's a, it, I think we'll go commercial. Not going to run in the US or Canada. We're going to go... Ooh, I was going to say big in Mexico, but we'll go medium. I want to try and go medium in all these regions. It's going to be very expensive though. The so British Isles medium, Japan medium, that's six mil just for those three. Europe medium is eight mil. Oh, it's getting up there. Um, we'll go medium... I might not go, do we not go medium Oceania? We've already got a Foxtel deal there, which is a big pay-per-view contract. Um, and then we'll go medium in India as well. That's 9.3. Add Oceania, that's 11.4. All right, we're going to, we're going to keep Oceania off along with the U S and Canada. Apparently there's already a broadcast with that name in the database. Fair enough. Um, I guess we'll have to rename it something else. Um, hmm. So fight network is a real thing, but I was hoping it wouldn't be in this, uh, in this database. Um, it's not very creative, but I might just go like this. We'll just go uh, Brutality. Brutality Network. The Brutal Network. Um, or just Brutal Network. As I said, I, I did want to like make it focused around I wanted it to be more, like more of a, a sort of fighting combat sort of network, and the the game or the thought process behind it is it doesn't just show wrestling, WCW. It's sort of Shane McMahon's creation of. I think Shane McMahon at one stage wanted Vince to buy the UFC. Um, in its really early early days, I remember Dana White saying something like that. Um, episode's getting really long. Um, I don't know if we can edit it later, but we'll go with, uh, we'll go with the Brutal Network. Um. The Brutal Network. I don't, I don't know if I like it though. I don't know if I like it. Let's go like this. Um, do we even call it network? I don't think we do. We're going to call it this. We're going to go. Oh. Combat Nation. I like it. I like that better. Bam. We're down to 11 million. How much did we spend just then? 9.325 million. But we now have coverage in... To, how do I have a look at it? Is there a coverage? There is a coverage. 
There you go. Let's go for TV shows because that's obviously what we're focusing on. Um, yeah. We pretty much got medium all across the US, minus Puerto Rico because we can't actually get on any Puerto Rican broadcasting. Um, none in the Maritime or Saskatchewan. Um, I mean, technically, we, we do have all these regions now, if I go all types. Uh, actually, why isn't that working? Oh, we need to give ourselves our own TV deal. Uh, completely forgot about that. Uh, let's go for... Going to be in Mexico. Search, Combat Nation, bam. New deal for events. 100% uh, blah, blah, blah. Prime time, yep done that one and then we need to give ourselves a new deal for nitro bam wait done medium in all those regions pretty much everything except us canada and oceania good stuff drop a like if you enjoy the episodes and uh make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you for all the support recently um views are up massively i'm pretty much getting you know, 1,500 or 1,500 more views for the TEW content than I was for the Football Manager content. Um, so I know you guys appreciate it. The views are up, the watch time's up, everything's up. You, you guys, you know, the engagement even, comments. Appreciate it so much, guys. Keep it up, keep up the good work, and I will keep pumping these episodes out. Honestly, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, and you guys can probably tell... Um, how much I'm enjoying it. You know, the last few episodes, Eddie Guerrero, you know, Rey Mysterio coming in. Um, we're pretty much a, a month away, just over a month from, from Starcade as well, which is going to be, it's going to be a good show, a really good pay-per-view. And uh, I think coming out of it as well, we're going to have a lot of different things to, to sort of talk about. So looking forward to that as well. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, guys, as always, take it easy and goodbye.